Hi, my name is Nick, aka The Coffee Detective, and today we're going to have a look at this elegant little fellow, which is the Hario Mizudashi Coffee Pot. It's cold brew coffee pot. By way of comparison, I've got here um, <coughs> another cold brew system that I use quite a bit, the, uh, the Toddy. Um, not quite as elegant, uh, but there's a reason for that, and that is that the Toddy makes a, a much, much richer concentrate, much more concentrated brew. So you put a ton of coffee in the top here um, with water um, and you get a concentrate at the bottom that's going to make you lots and lots of cups of coffee. But, I mean, it is big and our kitchen is not big. So I thought I'd have a look at the Hario, which is much slimmer and, and elegant, more elegant and easier to fit in the fridge. Um, <coughs> now, does it make as rich as a concentrate? No, it doesn't. Um, Basically, you get a liter of coffee. Um, there is a higher proportion of coffee grinds to water than if you were using a drip brewer, so it is slightly stronger than a regular coffee. But if you're adding ice to your cold brew, that kind of balances things out. Also, I, I, I really don't like kind of watery tasting cold brew coffee, so the fact that it's a slightly richer, kind of, richer brew uh, suits me quite well. So, how does it work? Well, you've got the glass vessel here. Oh, I've got the red one. You can get this in black, I believe. You can also get it in white. So, what you do, basically, is get yourself some coffee, get yourself some cold water, uh, put about 110 grams of coffee in the filter basket here, which, which I've already done. Um, now, you'll, you'll find some conflicting advice on how much coffee to put in here. Uh, when I looked at the Hario, Hario, Hario instructions, which are in Japanese, which doesn't help, uh, they were suggesting about 85 grams of coffee. Um, elsewhere I've seen people say, hey, put 125 grams of ground coffee. Uh, what I've found is, I've tried this a couple of times now, that about 110 grams, you know, I, I used my scales the first time, measured out about 110 grams, um, you know, splitting the difference a bit. And what I found actually is that 110 grams comes just up to the top of the filter material here, which is great because I don't want to have to measure out every time. I just want to pour it in and, until I get to here. The grind of the coffee, uh, it should be somewhere like in between the grind for drip brew and the coarser grind for uh, like a French press uh, brewer. So somewhere in between. If you're grinding your own coffee, uh, if you have your own grinder, you can just find that setting in between drip uh, and French press and that'll be perfect. If you don't, if you buy ground coffee for your drip brewer and you use that coffee in here, uh, well, you know, the world's not gonna come to an end. You'll probably manage just fine. So what do you do? Well, you put this in the vessel there and you just start pouring cold water over the top. Um, as you're doing that, <coughs> the first few pours, because it takes a few pours, you, you want to stir things up a little bit. I'm just using the, the handle of a spoon here, because uh, I want to make sure all the coffee is you know, equally wet and that my extraction is, is even from all of the coffee. Um, and you just keep going like this. Um, I'm probably good for it stirring there, making a bit of a mess. So, as I keep pouring, uh, <coughs> th there's a couple of reasons to make cold brew coffee. Uh, one is, of course, that it's great uh, during hot weather in the summer. Um, and, you know, hey, it's not, it doesn't just have to be black coffee with ice cubes. You can do all kinds of stuff with cold coffee. Um, the other reason uh, that I hear about a lot is that, you know, some people have sensitive stomachs and they you know, they, 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 they find coffee, regular coffee, to be a little bit too acidic and uncomfortable. Um, and one of the things about cold brew coffee is that the entire process is, is done cold. There's no heat applied. And as a result, the coffee that you make is, is a little bit smoother, but it is significantly less acidic than the coffee you get out of any kind of hot brew method. Um, so very popular for people who, who don't like the acidity in coffee but do like the taste. So uh, I'm not going to wait until we've gone all the way but basically you know, I'm going to keep pouring uh, and when it's up to about here, the top of the glass there, I'm going to stop and then I clip 
the lid on the top and I put the whole thing in the fridge and I leave it there uh, for 12 to 18 hours. You keep the, you know, you keep, keep the filter in here, keep everything immersed together uh, for 12 to 18 hours. So basically that for me now, that's gonna be tomorrow morning sometime. Uh, so then I'll take it over to the, the sink, I'll remove uh, the filter um, and clean that out. Actually, the, the, the bottom here just screws off um, and I actually put this, I actually put this in, the, um, in, in my compost because I've got a back, nice back garden. Uh, then once you've done that, just clip the top back on and put the glass, put, put the jug in the fridge and it'll stay there. You can, hey, if it lasts that long, it can stay, it can stay in the fridge for a week. So that's it. That's the Hario Mizudashi coffee pot cold brew brewing system. Um, I'm, I don't know. I don't know which is going to turn out is going to be my favorite. Uh, this is, like I say, this is takes up much less space. Uh, but if I use the toddy, then maybe I won't have to brew quite so often because, it, like I said, it's much more concentrated and lasts longer. So time will tell. But you know, on the face of it, I really like this kind of slimmer, more elegant approach. Okay, I hope you found that useful. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.